let's dive into a little bit of a history lesson here. We're going to start in the 1980s, where log management really just kind of started. In about around the 1980s, syslog was invented, the way of logging your data in the Unix systems. And it's probably not that well known, but syslog was actually built by the author of SendMail. When he was building SendMail, he needed a way to debug what's going on inside of the mail transfer agent, which is a very complex complex piece of software. So he had to build some kind of a logging mechanism, which he called syslog, which was really the birth of all logging that we know today. We then got into some use cases of forensics with all this data looking at what happened to a system, not necessarily even security focused in the beginning, but really application focused. Then people started sharing sort of grep patterns, like looking for different things in this data. And we started slowly getting into sort of reporting use cases, especially if you look at sort of the, the web space, right? When you do web analytics, that was kind of the first sort of larger reporting use case that we found in there. And only then we started really getting into the security use cases. And at about the 1999s of the, the century uh, border there, we started getting into the SIM space. Back then it was not the SIEM space, but actually the SIM space. Um, and really why that started was because we had intrusion detection systems and there was a lot of alerts coming from those and we needed to wait out all the false positives. And how to do that at the time was really matching up these IDS alerts with vulnerabilities of systems. The, the theory there was if the system is not vulnerable to a certain attack, then it's probably a false positive. So that was the first, the birth really of, of the SIM space. And it was expanded very quickly into incident management because that was, that's what really the IDS alerts were hinting at an incident. We got into this real time correlation component, which got more and more complicated. And, and then I, a lot of people say really that compliance was the savior of the SIM products because at the time it was really hard to, to, to justify the budget or the expense for a SIM tool. But when the compliance requirements came about, especially PCI, you had to do all this reporting, which was really cumbersome and log management really, really helped. And the SIMs helped provide these compliance packages, making the reporting for compliance much, much easier. With that, we ended up in a time frame of about 2005, where we invented something called the common event format, which was a way to try to standardize the way, the, the, the way that different products would log their messages so that sims would have an easy, easier time to understand what these different products um, spit out. This is a time when I was at ArcSight actually uh, co-authored the CEF standard. And we did this because there were 350 different products we had to support with different log formats, and it was just getting unwieldy to, to support all that. So trying to push this standard. It hasn't gotten exactly where we wanted this thing to end up, where everybody's using CEF, but it's, it's out there and it's used pretty widely. Then big data with Hadoop and Spark entered the market, and people got kind of frustrated with where the SIM space was. It didn't scale well enough. The, the use cases were not quite deep enough to really satisfy the amount of money that, that people poured into the SIM products. And people started exploring that and used big data setups, mostly not very successful, to try to apply security use cases to it. Then in 2002, we had the first logging as a service product out in the market, which was Logly, where we put this whole thing into the cloud. After that, we have a little bit of an open source era between 2012 and maybe 2016, we had the Elk stack really getting very famous. This is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, which is an open source stack that the company now, Elastic, is supporting still. And a lot of people are using for their, their log management use cases, um, either the paid version or also the open source version Elk. At the time, it was also an open SOC, which then trans transitioned into Apache Metron, a project that was trying to build an open source framework for big data management and big data analytics for security. It's still around. Unfortunately, it, it kind of uh, lost steam and got a little bit of abandoned, probably also because there was actually a competing standard, Apache Spot. And having two of these standards out there is, is not always necessarily the best approach. It would have been better to try to combine it. But unfortunately, my efforts failed to bring those two together. Then in 2015, the security data lake uh, I actually wrote 
a little O'Reilly book about the topic at the time. And this is something that more and more people started building the security data lakes. And they are, they're still around, but people also realize they're actually not that cheap to maintain themselves. Then we're entering a phase which I call the logging wild west. It started in probably about 2016 with the UEBA tools, the user and entity behavior analytics tools. This was sort of a competition to SIM because again, people were kind of unhappy with the SIM space at the time. It was very expensive to buy a SIM and maintain it. So there's this whole set of products that came in the market that took a slightly different approach and said, well, we're gonna just look at the risk of the users and the entities and look at their behaviors and figure out what's malicious out there. If you look at what happened with that today, you, you find no UEBA uh, tool anymore. All of these tools have morphed into sort of UEBA plus SIM. So they're not only UEBA anymore. Um, and a lot of them actually got sold and were bolted on to other solution platforms out there. Then I have here uh, metrics correlation. This is a time where we had logs to start with. But we also collected metrics uh, in, in all kinds of time series databases. Uh, if you know Grafana, for example, we looked at different metrics to understand systems. So finally, there's, there were some solutions coming to the market that were melting both of them into the same platform, which really makes a lot of sense. And, and unfortunately, not all the platforms out there are, are really good at that right now. Then in 2017, we had SOAR um, entering the market, which was really about automation and remediation. But again, it was this standalone product. And if you look again on the market, you won't find many standalone source solutions. Most of them have been picked up by existing SIM products or by some other products, and they were integrated into these other um, platforms, if you want. Then we started pivoting a little bit or, or adding another set of use cases, the whole DevSecOps movement, understanding better what our development pipelines are doing, but also integrating the cloud management components, understanding what your clouds are doing. And then yeah, probably for the last year, we have started hearing about this XDR, which um, really, if you dig down and un try to understand what these vendors mean by XDR, it's really not much different from what the Sims have been promising us for, for almost two decades at this point, but with a little bit more focus and with more uh, sort of focused use cases, if you want. And, and with along that, um, not this completely open platform where you throw all the data that you have at it, but much more focused on what use cases, um, what kind of data these different use cases need. So a little bit of a, a narrower view, if you want, um, than the Sims are taking with this much broader approach. Going forward, let's see if, if someone is actually going to develop the security data lake house, which is um, the lake house is actually a big data term you might have heard of at this point, where um, the data lake is transitioning into something new now. This is something that's really driven by the big data movement. Let's see if, if that's also going to be adopted in the security space. Now, to make this whole graph here a little more complicated, I'm adding another uh, swim lane here in the bottom. And what I want to highlight here is sort of what has the types of analytics been that have been applied in these different times. And I want to point out only a couple things here. The first one is anomaly detection. We have been looking at anomaly detection for probably 25 years in the security space, outside of the security space, probably even longer. But if you look at it, what we're doing today is actually not that different from what we have done back then. And there's a little bit of memory loss here. The, the things that are invented today, if you were actually go back there's a very famous conference called RAID, Recent Advances in Intrusion Detection, where a lot of research has been published that I would actually urge a lot of people to go back to and look at because we have tried so many things back then. And there's actually some really interesting approaches that we should carry forward into today's tools as well. Another thing I want to highlight here is 2006. That's something that I was very involved with, trying to leverage data visualization to understand security better. And I say an attempt in visual analytics there because it really hasn't taken, um, um, taken on really. If you look at the today's products, there's really not that much visualization in there, but it's such a powerful tool, but it's also, it, it's very hard to get it right. So probably still something to watch a little bit and see what are the vendors gonna do in this whole um, sort of visual analytics space. And then 
the, the risk centricity there around 20, 2016, that's something we're going to talk about in the next slide when we talk about where we are today. And I'm going to explore that a little more. Finally, I'm throwing yet another swim lane on here on the bottom. Um, what you can notice here is back in the beginnings of log management and SIN, we really focused on network logs, right? So IDS logs, firewall logs, and flows, like network flows, uh, and some vulnerability data. And then we had a whole progression there. And only in about 2009, we started adding endpoint data to it, which is really, really fundamental today. If you have a SIM setup, I urge you to probably pull in some endpoint data, especially of your critical systems. And then if you go forward, there's, there's the IS log, so the cloud infrastructure understanding that we added in about 2016. That's very important if you're running cloud infrastructure, so you wanna understand what they're doing. And then today, or maybe tomorrow, I really see a focus much more on data. What is our data doing, our files that we move around? And we'll talk about that a little bit more 